Well, welcome to the ranch. We haven't done any uh, breeding videos this year just because I've been so busy with brush bullet and trying to get brush bullet going this year. If you don't know what brush bullet is, is that's a, the invention I've got that, that controls cedar trees or any unwanted trees. So we're about done with the breeding season. I thought maybe I would uh, try to get something in here. Okay, so this is this is Rhonda. And Rhonda is a mare I raised and trained and showed and then sold her to Lewis, my, my nephew. So she's out of the clone Playboy's Ruby and then by Metallic Cat. I trained her and then I showed her in the fraternity and made her to the finals. Her and then her, her twin brother. So when we flushed, we got embryos, two twin embryos. Her twin brother. Like the first go, I was first on field and then I think I was third or fourth on her out of 600 horses. Made it to the finals, then went go, the night before we were going to the finals, the NCHA official, official said she was crippled. And I had to get like two vets to sign off on her at 9 o'clock in the morning. I was showing, in, I was showing it like 8 o'clock, I was like in the first bunch the next morning. So them, them, them guys, um, you know, they knew she got out of a clone. I think that's why they were giving me hell. Which I found two vets to sign off that she wasn't crippled. And then they drug tested my horse. And of course she didn't have any drugs in her and crap like that. And it, I don't know, she's kind of the one that put a, for the NCHA, she put, it kind of put a bad taste in my mouth. And that was kind of the, what started me kind of to get, you know, quit showing because, and, and then also I raised her and trained her. And that's kind of a no, no in the NCHA world, NCHA world, you kind of, they want you to be some fine stuff. And, spending lots of money and I just I was kind of the guy that raised his own horses and trained his own horses and that goes against which the norm is so let's see if this mare is a breeder um she actually I know she's going to be I can already see oh mare so this is all uterus right here that's all edema she's got a little fluid right there see that big follicle the big, big black circle that's a big follicle so she's fixing to ovulate. Okay, so before we go get the stallion, let me talk about what's going on with this mare. So what, what's happened is we bred her once and she didn't stick. And so now she's coming back in the heat. And when I say coming back in the heat is what's actually going on with her. And what I was looking at with the ultrasound is, is, a, is a, first is the cervix will soften up, get ready for the semen to come through the cervix. But then the uterus pumps up, and that's the that's when we say the tone. Let's go. That she got a lot of tone, and on the ultrasound, it looks kind of like a wagon wheel in there. And then that, and and at the same time, we saw a little bit of fluid with this mare, which is, um, which today is no big deal. I'm not too worried about it. But a lot of times, whenever they start, uh, the cervix starts opening up and relaxing, you'll see some fluid and air come back in there, which we can put it back out with, uh, with oxytocin. But then at the same time. The ovaries are up here, and on the ovaries are follicles, and we've got one big dominant follicle, and that was the big round one I showed you, and that's got the oocyte in there. So what we want to do as of right now is, I gave her a shot at LH yesterday, so she's going to ovulate sometime this afternoon. So my plan is, is to breed her before she ovulates. So by giving her the LH yesterday, it sinks what we're doing right now. So I'll breed her here in just a sec, and then she's going to ovulate here you know, in the next four, five, six hours. So the ideal is, is we want the semen in the oviduct, not the uterus, but it goes up into the oviduct. And then when it ovulates, the semen is sitting there waiting on that oocyte. And then that oocyte comes out, hopefully fertilization is taking place and it takes about five days for it to work down the oviduct to reach the uterus. And then into the uterus, it takes about day 10, day seven before um, it attaches to the uterus. And at day 12, day 10, day 12, we can see it on ultrasound, see if she's pregnant or not. So um, so that's what we're doing. So we're gonna get this stud, go get this stud right now. I'm gonna build an AV, which is artificial vagina. We're gonna collect him. And yeah, everybody says, why don't you just let him do it naturally? Well, it's too dangerous for the mare and it's too dangerous for the stallion because the mare is protecting her colt and she doesn't want the stallion coming around there. Um, jacking with a colt, and we don't want the stallion biting the colt, and we don't want the mare kicking a kicking the stallion and, and hurting stuff. So that's why we do it artificial, 
like this because it's safer for everybody involved, um, us included. Like, cause if you if you gotta um, hold a mare to for a stallion to mount, it's just a wreck. Now you can go turn them out in the in the pasture and just let them naturally breed like that. But then you're only gonna get a handful of mares bred, and it's still extremely dangerous uh, for the mares and the colts and the stallion. So we do it this way so we can uh, ship semen across the country if we need to, or we breed mares. But when you get towards the end of the season, instead of having eight or 10 mares to breed a day, you're down to the onesies and the twosies because you're at the end of the season. So that's where we're at today. We're, the season's almost over. And so we're gonna hopefully get Rhonda, this is our last shot to get Rhonda bred and, uh, for the 2023 season. So, all right, let's go get an AV built and we will have that stallion coming. So Carlos is coming with the stallion, and, and here's the system. You, you put the mare in here, and of course the mare needs to be in heat, but she's in heat. You can't just put any random old mare in here. So we got her in here, but we got a wall here to protect her and the foal from each other. We'll tease the stallion, and once he's ready to go, we'll wash him up. We won't put that on YouTube, us washing him, because they'll pull that off YouTube. Then we'll bring him around, and he'll jump this dummy, and then the dummy uh, once he's up on the dummy, then I'll move in there and, and uh, collect him. This thing here has got a filter in it, which filters the gel. Because with the gel is the last part of the semen that we don't need. So we don't want the stallion to jump the dummy any more than we have to. We like to do it on the first jump, get him collected and be done. Because you're only going to get so, like, say you're only going to get four or five billion, this, this stallion here, you only, only get four or five billion sperm cells. So the more you jump it, the more you jump it, the more similar fluid you get. So you, essentially you just dilute it more. And, and that is, um, that just causes more problems. You just don't, it actually harder on the semen. So you want it as concentrated as you can get. That's a good that was a good collection. So we'll just kind of hope. Yep, go home. Okay, so first thing you want to do is get this water out of here because it's actually too hot. Even though the semen's down in the cup. This is putting on heat it's too hot. So we'll get it out of here right quick. The semen's still, some of it's still running down. That's the filter, so that filters the gel out. And then that's the semen. I mean, I haven't, I know the stallion. I haven't, I haven't checked him yet, but we're looking at 40 cc's and that's 35, 40 cc's and that's perfect. So if he were to jump two or three times, what I was trying to explain was is there's more similar fluid. The sperm cells, stay in the, that number stays the same, but then it comes up here. And so essentially you just get it diluted more and that's, you don't want any, any more dilution. So you want it as concentrated as you can get it. Now, if it gets too diluted, we can centrifuge it and clean it up, but we don't want to do that. The gel, there was no gel today, so that's good. Um, so we we just got the one mare to breed. This is enough to breed. Oh, I mean, I, I can test it and all that, but it's probably enough to breed about six or seven mares here. Okay. Um, so we'll, um, we'll I'll, I'm just going to get a double check on it, make sure we're still good. I need one little drop. That's it. 
Oh my gosh, it's super concentrated. Yeah, so that's a good collection. Um, so, you know, he's at, he, he gave us five billion, five billion total sperm, okay? So five billion, and then I look at here and I get, I get the motility. So the motility is about 80% motility. So 80% of five billion is how many we, it, you, you divide that up, or and that's how many uh, uh, live sperm cells you have. And for breeding here at the ranch, with this horse, we need half a billion sperms, live sperms, per dose or per mare. Now, if we were shipping semen, we would bump that to a billion because we know that when we, sh when we cool it and ship it, half of them are going to die. And so when it gets to the, the wherever we're breeding that mare, we'll have half a billion there. And so half a billion here. So, I mean, we're looking at an easy eight mares here to breed today. So we got one mare to breed. We're not going to dump it out on the ground, so we're going to go ahead and breed this mare and um, and use it all here because this is the only mare. Like I said, we're at the end of the breeding season. We're kind of running out of mares to breed because everything's pregnant, and I'm running out of syringes. I need a syringe. So you figure um, that's probably about two and a half billion mobile sperm right there. I don't, it's not, I'm not, I've got some left in the, in the deal. So that's about five times more than we need, but we're not going to, we're not going to just go bare minimum. We're going to go extra and, and, um, cause we've got it and we're not going to just dump it on the ground. So, all right, so let's go wash this mare up and then we'll AR. Okay. The sunlight is extremely hard on, and you don't want to have like big temperature swings. Of course, it's freaking already hot here today. So this little colt here is out of the same stallion we just collected. So, uh, so if we get her pregnant, whatever foal she has will be a full brother or full sister to him. And the stallion, the stallion was a horse called uh, CD Reloaded, which was it's a horse that I could, I cloned. Um, he um, he was a gilding that won about 800,000 named Sister CD in the cutting world. And was just a, he's just a great horse. And I always really liked that horse. And so, but he was a gilding. So since he was a gilding, you know, you couldn't, you know, we, the, his genetics were lost when he was castrated. So anyways, I bought the cloning rights to him, cloned him, and left him as a stallion. And so I've got several colts and we're just now starting to ride the colts out of him. All right, so we're just going to do a little quick clean up here. Clean up on aisle one. So we don't want to drag anything extra in there because the services will close up. And if we got some, uh, you know, piece of crap in there or something, and we, we close the door on it, well, then it causes an infection. So essentially all I'm doing is I'm going in vaginally. I'm, the cervix is extremely relaxed here. It's just like a loose goose. And I'm sticking my finger, my index finger in it to guide my pipette because the, the cervix is so soft, it just, there's, there's, there's no tone to it at all. So I got my finger, I did have my finger stuck in there. I got my finger stuck down in, just, just to help me get started. And now I'm pulling that cervix back to me a little bit. I'm still hung up. There we go. Okay. So that cervix was, was so soft that it's just kind of flipping over. All right, now I've got my air pocket spun around here. So my air pocket is the last thing to go in. So the air is at the top. And I'm hoping I'm pinching that cervix at both both sides and then so you want your air to go in last because then that's what cleans your pipette out okay and then I've now got the pipette the cervix pinched off like this and I'm just slowly pulling pulling the pipette out and I got the pin, I got the cervix pinched off just a little bit just to make sure the semen doesn't fall back out and then 
come back out real slow. And the trick is to kind of go down like that. So you don't want to come out real fast and then you suck a bunch of air back in there. So the ideal is she comes into heat, the uterus tones up, she builds one big dominant follicle, whichever left or right, and this time it just happens to be on the right. It's about a 30, 40 millimeter follicle, 35 to 40 millimeter follicle. We gave her a shot yesterday. That's gonna make her ovulate, which was about 24 hours ago. She, it usually is about 30 hours before she ovulates, so she's gonna ovulate by noon today. We bred her. The semen should be up, headed up, racing up to the oviduct, and it'll be up in the oviduct. As soon as she ovulates and the oocyte comes down into the oviduct, the semen's sitting there waiting on it. Fertilization takes place five days later. Down the oviduct, hits the uterus at day five, floats around there for about five days, and then day 11, it attaches to the uterine wall. And then that tells the, the, the what was a follicle is now corpus luteum, that's producing the progesterone. That tells the corpus, the corpus luteum, it's like, hey, we were pregnant, keep producing progesterone. That's what we want, and then we'll check the pregnancy, and then we're done. It's that easy. Breeding horses is just easy. So, all right, well, that's it for today. Um, we'll catch you all in, the, in a week or two, and thanks for following. Thanks for subscribing and giving me a thumbs up if you thought that was any good.